Hello, my name is Michael, and I'm going to be giving you a brief overview of Big Indian versus Little Indian. To start out, the terminology is a reference to the 1726 novel Gulliver's Travels, written by Jonathan Swift, in which two religious sects are divided between those who prefer cracking open their eggs from the big end and those who prefer the low end. Swift is uh, poking fun at society and how we can get in these big fights over little things relevant today because computer architectures uh, still argue about which convention is better, Big Indian or Little Indian. Big Indian is a machine that stores the most significant byte first. So the most significant byte first. Left to right. It moves left to right, seen by the arrow. Little Indian is a machine that stores the least significant byte first. So it moves right to left. Uh, this is a reminder that in MIPS we have 32 bits in a word, 8 bits in a byte, and 4 bytes in a word. The address of a 4-byte word is the address of the first byte. Uh, that might seem a little confusing, but just remember that if you have 32 bits, you want to split it up into 4 bytes, and that first byte is your word address. Alright, we have an example here that we have a hexadecimal word given by this, and we're going to split it up into 4 bytes like so. And remember that this is hexadecimal word, so each of these digits is 4 bits, and we take two of them, which gives us 8 bits each, and we have 8 bits in a byte. So that's how we split it up. But the hard part is how do we store it in memory? So in Big Indian, we're reminded that we store the most significant byte in the smallest address. And we're reminded that we move from left to right. So we have this table, and we have a byte address, and we have x, x plus 1, x plus 2, x plus 3. x can be anything. Uh, we can just make it 0 to make it easiest. But basically, this is the smallest address. So we go to our number, take the most significant byte for Big Indian, and we move it to the smallest address. So big Indian, we're moving left to right. Simple enough. And then, oops. And then back to our example, we have little Indian, and we're just doing the opposite. We're gonna store the least significant byte in the smallest address. So this is still the smallest address, but this time we're going to the least significant bit Byte, sorry, byte. And we're going to put that to the smallest address. So here we're moving right to left. If you see here, right to left. And there we go. Okay, so here we have an example. What is the word at the word address? Zero in hexadecimal in Big Little Indian. So we have our byte address starting with zero, one, two, three. We have our contents. Uh, these are the bytes that are in each byte address. And then we have in Big Indian, we remember that it moves from left to right. And you take the lowest address and you make that the most significant byte. So most significant. And then you just carry on like so. Okay, so that's Big Indian. Now for Little Indian, we know that we have the lowest address, and we may make that the least significant byte. So we take this one, and we remember that we move from right to left, so we fill that out like so. And, and you might be asking yourself, well, why don't we just use Big Indian? because it's like English and reading, you read from left to right, so that's a lot easier. But many people would argue and say that Big Indian is actually backwards because you have the smallest address and you're using that as the most significant byte. So that's confusing to some people. Um, it's really just a matter of preference, um, but you can see where the confusion comes in both ways. All right, we have another example, and it's supposed that register S0 initially contains this hexadecimal value. What, 
what value does s here contain after running the follow following program? So we have a store word. It takes this register, which we know to be this hexadecimal value, and it puts it into this memory address with zero offset. Then we take that memory address, we offset it with two, and we load it into the register as zero. And this is a load bit instruction, so it's not a load word, or byte, load byte instruction, sorry. And it's not a load word, so we're loading the byte from this address into this. Okay, so we have this value. We're gonna break it up like so. And then again, we're reading left to right. So remove these. This would be 2D, 4B, and FF. And this is the memory address, and it's increasing this way. So what would S0 contain? Well, if we look at this. This is an offset of 2, so we go 0, 1, 2. So this is 4B. And then we sign extend it into the hexadecimal number given here. So that's big Indian. Now for little Indian, we do the same thing, but we're moving from right to left. So we have the double F here, the 4B, and so forth and so forth. And then we do the same thing with our two offset, 0, 1, 2. So this is our value. And we have um, S0 would contain this hexadecimal value. We sign extend it. Looks like there's not enough zeros in that, but you get the picture. Um, and moving on. Alright, and here's another part where people get confused. Um, you may say that little Indian is backwards because we read it right to left. But you have to be careful when you say that because each byte is given in the correct left to right order. So although we are reading the bytes from right to left, you have to see that this is still 1B. This isn't B1. Okay, so this is the byte. Inside the byte, you still read left to right. But on all the, all the bytes together, you're actually reading those from right to left. So that can be a little confusing, but don't write this as B1, A2, 3, 1. Don't just read this backwards. You have to split it up into bytes first. Okay. Um, and then why does it matter? Well, we get into trouble when we use two different computers that have two different Indian methods. The values will be read in reversed order and they won't make any sense. So we just have to be aware of that. And these are some different processors that use Big Indian and processors that use Little Indian. So I hope my video has been a little bit uh, informative and just give you a brief overview. Um, and thank you for your time.